Ever since I first heard about conductive fabric, I've always wanted to make one of these, a plush game controller. And sure, I could have used soft switches made from two layers of conductive fabric and taken apart an old game controller, but really it's more fun to use capacitive touch sensing and the onboard keyboard functionality that comes with Flora, our Arduino-based wearables platform. And it just so happens to have eight I.O. pins that you can hook up to eight pads of conductive fabric and play all your favorite classic games online. We made a free pattern for this project to help you make the circuit and the plush toy. So download it, print it out, and it'll come on four sheets that you can tile together into one big pattern. And then cut out each individual pattern piece. Find some double-sided iron-on interfacing at your local craft store or online and cut a small piece to iron on to some conductive fabric. You can use your regular iron, just don't use any steam, or I like this tiny little iron, it gives me more control with small pieces. Cut out pieces of the conductive fabric now laminated with double-sided iron-on interfacing into the shape of the buttons of the game controller, according to the pattern. Lay out your fabric so that the fuzzy side is oriented the way you like it. This is called the nap of the fabric. And then decide where to place your conductive fabric pads. Don't put them too close to the edge or you won't have anything to grab onto with your embroidery hoop. We'll cut the design down to match the shape of the front pattern piece later. Using the layout diagram as a reference, peel off the paper backing of the interfacing and iron the conductive fabric onto your regular fabric. Place your flora on the project according to the layout diagram and then use a water-soluble embroidery marker to draw the lines that you'll later stitch in conductive thread to connect the conductive fabric buttons to the pads on the flora. Now that we know where to stitch, it's time to set up the work in an embroidery hoop. Thread a needle with conductive thread. I like to use the Adafruit stainless steel two-ply for this project. Stitch several times around one of the pads of conductive fabric and tie off the tail at the back and seal that knot with a little bit of clear nail polish. And if you want more tips about working with conductive thread, check out our video on the subject. Once you've made a several loops around, you can start stitching the path along the line you drew with the water-soluble marker up to the corresponding pad on the flora. You could use any embroidery stitch you want, but to keep things simple, we're just using a running stitch, which just goes up and down through the fabric along the line. After stitching around the pads on the flora, make another knot and cut off the tail on the back of the work. Repeat this process for all seven other buttons on your game controller. When you're finished sewing with the conductive thread, you can take everything out of the embroidery hoop and iron out any creases. You can get the sample code for this project as well as Modern Devices Capacitive TouchSense Library on GitHub and just load the code onto your flora. After programming, open up a text editor and check and see that your keyboard flora is typing the letters that you expect it to. It's pretty cool. And if yours isn't typing at all, double check your wiring against the diagram and also be sure that your body is grounded. That means your feet should be touching the floor. When you're satisfied with the functionality of your circuit, you can erase the disappearing ink lines by blotting them with a damp paper towel. Now it's time to transform our flat functional circuit into a 3D plushie. Cut black fabric to match the pattern piece that calls to be cut in black, and then use a bigger piece of double-sided iron-on interfacing to make the entire back of it sticky. Then pin the pattern piece to the fabric once more and use a ruler and a sharp blade to cut out the button windows. Unplug the controller from the computer and check and see that your newly created faceplate lines up with your iron-on circuit you made earlier. I then chose to use a small piece of scrap fabric to cover just the flora board so it wouldn't get sticky interfacing on it. Then just iron the rest of it on. Then it's time to cut out all your pattern pieces. So you've got a larger piece of fabric with your circuit embroidered on it. You can lay your pattern piece on top of it and cut that front panel out and then repeat with all of the rest of your pattern pieces, cutting a back piece, uh, two long side pieces and two short side pieces. Start constructing your plushie by pinning the sidewalls together, uh, right sides together, to make a rectangle. And also pay attention that the direction of the fuzz or the nap lines up all the way around. Then machine or hand stitch these seams and cut off all loose threads. Lay out your back panel and pin the resulting rectangle to it. Right sides together all the way around all four edges. Begin stitching near the last third of one of the longer edges. When you get to the corner, 
Lift the presser foot and rotate the project 90 degrees while flipping that extra fabric to lay in the opposite direction. And then continue stitching until you get to the next corner. Remember to stop early on that last side around, leaving a gap to stuff the toy that's about as wide as your hand. Align the bottom part of the plushie to the front piece and pin around all the edges, being sure the nap on the back panel matches the nap on the front panel. Stitch around all four edges and trim any stray threads. Carefully turn the entire thing right side out and remove any stray fuzzies with a lint roller or some packing tape. Then get set up to stuff the plush toy. You'll start with the corners and use a pen or a chopstick to help push small bits of polyester stuffing into the corners. And then continue filling with small bits into the inner cavity of the plush toy until you achieve the desired firmness you would like. Bring the needle from the inside to the outside of the fabric hiding the knot on the inside of the plush toy. Then stitch along the seam using a ladder stitch. This stitch grabs pieces of fabric on alternating sides of the seam, resulting in threads that look like rungs of a ladder. And when cinched tight, this stitch is almost invisible. When you meet up with the machine stitching at the other end of the seam, you can tie a double knot with the needle and then bury the needle into and out of the plush toy at a random other spot and trim the thread that buries the lead inside the plush toy. It's easy to find your favorite classic game emulator online, and we've also provided a couple of the examples we used in the tutorial for this project, and all the links are in the description below. You can reprogram the Arduino to make these capacitive touch buttons print any keyboard button you'd like, so it's configurable to any game emulator you can find. It's also highly addictive and a whole lot of fun. When not in use, you can just unplug the USB cable and the controller will look just as great on your desk or on the couch. Now it's your turn. Show us your electronics projects in our weekly show and tell on Google Plus and subscribe for more wearable Wednesdays.